Hi, everybody. This is Mr. Folly. Oops. And this is the last of part three. Um, podcast effects of intermolecular forces. Oh, um, and we will be teasing through this whole thing. So we've got to talk about how polarity really matters. So let's take a look. We're going to differentiate between intramolecular and intermolecular forces. We're going to talk about how intermolecular forces determine the state of matter of a substance at room temperature or covalent bonded covalent molecules. And then you're going to learn define viscosity when forces up, viscosity up. Define volatility, forces up, volatility down. Define surface tension, forces up, surface tension up. Let's do it. Intramolecular forces within the molecule. That is strong. Okay. Intermoleculars between molecules. So if I have the substance hydrogen chloride, right? This bond is strong. Oh my goodness gracious. This bond is strong. This bond is weak. See how it's farther away? This one is strong. See how it's closer and it is even written as solid? And then the longer one is weaker. So this one is stitched together, stitchy, 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 stitchy space, right? So that should be pretty easier. So intermolecular forces, we have hydrogen bonding, which we'll define a little bit better. Dipole, dipole, dispersion, and these are much weaker than covalent. Much weaker, like 10 times, 20 times, bunches of times, okay? So what you should get from this is intramolecular is covalent, which is stronger intermolecular there's three types type one type two type three and they are much weaker okay so intermolecular has three types hydrogen bonds is the first type it's h bonded directly to o to n or to f they're very polar we talked about polar molecules very polar you can have more than one h bond on a molecule so what that means is this is just a polar bond, but it's super polar, okay? So the analogy I use for this is, and I think maybe you've done something else before. If I said that um, Maggie has a Jeep, Maggie never says, oh, we can take my car. Maggie says, we can take my Jeep. Hydrogen bonds are the Jeep of dipole dipole. So we don't hear like Harris talking about, oh, we can take my Honda. No, he never says it. He said, we can take my car, right? You never hear um, Sam talking about, oh, we can take my Kia. No, 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 that doesn't happen. So, but if you have a Jeep, you have to tell everybody you have a Jeep. At which point somebody says, you mean kind of like a Tesla? And I say, yes, exactly. All right. Dipole, dipole is two polar molecules. There'll be a partial positive and partial negative. Hey, that's the definition of polar. It needs polar bonds and a polar shape. Hey, that was the last podcast. Hey, I remember doing that. There's a bigger electronegativity difference, the stronger the dipole. Okay, so if I have um, H to I, that's polar, right? Delta positive, delta negative. Look at your periodic table if you don't believe me. If I have H to F, this is a bigger delta positive, bigger delta negative, this one will have stronger. And when you look at the periodic table, um, fluorine is 3.98, hydrogen is 2.20. Okay. So I subtract those two, I'm going to get 1.98. Iodine, shoot, I don't have my periodic table with me, is something like, I don't know, it's like 1.50, 2.20, right? So it's much smaller. Whatever it is. You have a periodic table. You can. Dispersion. All forces have, let me get rid of the word this, have dispersion forces. So if I have dipole, dipole, do I have dispersion? Yes. It just doesn't matter as much. If I have H bonds, do I have dispersion? Yes. It just doesn't matter as much. Okay. More electrons means stronger dispersion forces. Okay. So dispersion, I like to think of them as pennies, right? So everybody's got pennies let's pretend that's true if you've got a 20 dollar bill 
Do you care about how many pennies you have? Nope. And if you have a thousand dollar bill, do you care about how many pennies you have? Nope. But if you don't have any of those and you've got pennies, do you care about how many pennies? You have? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So the way dispersion forces come about is, and this is what this diagram up on top is supposed to show. So if I start off with an atom like this, and I have electrons evenly distributed throughout the whole thing. Remember, electrons are zooming all over the place. If by chance, most of them ended up on the left, wouldn't this side be a little bit positive? And if it's a little bit positive, wouldn't the electrons go, ooh, positive, I like that, and it shoots over here. And that's why the attraction happens. Okay. Intermolecular forces determine the state of matter for covalent compounds. Strong forces hold them together. The strongest forces will be a solid. The weakest forces will have them be a gas. Okay. So H bonds are the strongest. Remember, they are super polar, super dipole. And then dipole, dipole, and then dispersion. Okay. So strongest forces are H bonds, super polar, super dipole. They're most likely going to be a solid. Middle forces, dipole, dipole, could be a liquid. Weakest, most likely a gas. Predict the state of matter for each of these. So remember, um, OH, anytime you have OH, that means it's going to have H bonding, which is strong, which means it's going to be um, most likely a solid. Okay? And I don't look up what these things are. We're just rolling with this, okay? So this is the idea of what we're looking for here. Do you see the OH part here? So I have H directly bonded to N, H directly bonded to O, or H directly bonded to F. That's what it takes to be H bonded. That's going to be a solid. Okay. CH4, by the way, these structures are the same thing. C to H is nonpolar. When we did molecules, I said it's very important that you learn that. It's very helpful. So it's nonpolar. It has dispersion only. That means it's most likely a gas. Okay. HF, see how that's H directly bonded to F? That's strong H bond. That means it's most likely a solid. Okay. Now this one, O to F, are different molecules. So I'm going to subtract their bonds. So 3.98, which is F, and then oxygen, I think think is 3.04. When I do that, I get 0.94. I'm sorry, I don't have my periodic table, but I do know that it's a polar bond. So if it's polar, so that means I'm going to have dipole, dipole, dipole dash dipole. That means, uh-oh, I'm going to have a liquid. Okay, so I have polar bonds, and notice how my polarity doesn't cancel out. All right, next one. Viscosity is resistance to flow. Okay, so for example, ketchup has a high viscosity, it pours slowly. And if you prefer to call it catsup, you can do that too. Um, strong forces increase flow, so it would have a slow flow. So cat ketchup has a high viscosity, and it pours slowly. Weak forces decrease viscosity. It has a fast flow. So this right here, do you see how this is the biggest flow? Right? Weak forces. So I would say this is probably dispersion. And this one right here that isn't flowing much at all is probably H bond. There really was a molasses flood of 1919. I'll talk about that in class a little bit because it's crazy. Volatility is the ability to evaporate. Okay, So if you evaporate, the liquid's turning to a gas. So that means I have these particles that are right here, and they're all kind of packed together, right? But some of them are going to leave. Ah! Why would they leave if they have their friends here? Right? Why would they do that? Well, the attraction must be very low. Okay, So if you look around and all your friends go to school in, like, Texas and the South, and you go to school at Northwestern and you're close, your friends don't like you. You're not very attractive. Ah! That hurts. 
Um, high volatility, liquid turns to gas, low intermolecular forces. Low volatility, the liquid stays liquid due to strong intermolecular forces. And just to remind you, H bonding is the strongest. So a lot of times we're just comparing these things. So like I could compare my strength to um, this Lopez Yanez, right? I would be stronger, but still, if there's somebody that's stronger than me, you could throw out, uh, I don't know, who's stronger than me? Nobody. That's who's stronger than me at LT. Nobody. Let's bring it on. Come on. Come on. How much you bench, bro? How much you bench? All right. Service tension. Liquid is very attracted to itself, like Dante. So Dante is very attracted to himself. He just hangs out with himself all the time. He thinks he's so awesome, so amazing. doesn't even matter, okay? And will not react with other types of molecules, okay? Um, this happens most often with H bonding. So again, strong forces would emphasize this. It forms a dome. See how this particle is attracted here and here and here and here? So it's less likely to fall down the back. Weak forces have little surface tension. So if there were no attractions on this guy right here, if this guy had no attractions at all, so you see how he would kind of fall and gravity would just kind of have him end up over here. Melting point, boiling point. Strong forces make boiling point go up because the particles are so attracted to each other, they stay a liquid. Strong forces make melting point go up. It's the same thing. Because the particles are so attracted to each other, they stay a solid. So remember, if I have solid particles, they're close to each other, right? They kind of get their little groove on, vibrate next to each other. Um, and if I add more energy, shaky, 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 then they become a liquid. But it takes a lot, depending on how much they are attracted to each other, it would take more energy to have them leave each other. Water has H bonding, which is really strong. So if H bonding is really hot, strong, it has a high surface tension, a high viscosity, a high boiling point. That's going to have a low volatility for its mass. Now, this is important. That's for its mass because other things have higher, right? But for its mass, it's the best. Bigger molecules have tons of dispersion forces, so their values can be higher. That means I can have more money from pennies than you can have from $20 bills. Bring me the pennies. And there's a coin shortage. Dunkin' Donuts tells me this. So I'm living in large. Water is one of only two solutions that is larger when it's frozen. These H bonds, do you see how water looks like Mickey Mouse? Right? Water looks like Mickey Mouse. It will form rings. See these rings? These rings have empty space. Notice how it's missing a couple of water molecules that could have fit in here. Because of the hydrogen bonds, we have rings which make it larger. If it's larger, it will be less dense. What do you need to know from this? Ice is a ring, or many rings, of H2O. H bonding is strong, holds particles together. Intermolecular forces affect state of matter. That's your boiling point, melting point. Viscosity, know that definition. <gasps> Resistance to flow. Volatility, know that definition. Ability to evaporate. And density of the solid. That's really only for water. Ionic compounds um, do this, but we're not doing ionic compounds yet. Covalent compounds do not use covalent bonds. That's it. So I will say this to you. Toodles. Where's my stopping thing? Dun, dun, dun.